For New Year's, many of us make New Year's resolutions. We decide to make a change in our lives for the better. Yet when the end of the year comes, or even a couple months later, we haven't followed through. Like the man in today's episode, we tend to go back on decisions, even when they're good for us. So is there a way to combat this double-mindedness? Let's find out. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. And that includes sound effects. Just a heads up, today's episode might have some content that's not suitable for our younger listeners. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a man who wanted to change. But every time he tried it for himself, he took two steps forward and one step back. But we'll see who could change his heart for good on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. Part one of the true story of Odell Summer. You better keep an eye on the guy in this next cell. You think he was serious about killing himself? You never know. He's trying to hang himself! Quick! Cut him down! We gotta take everything away from him. Sheet, mattress, clothes, everything. No! Let me out of here! I can't stand it! You hear? You gotta let me out! Shut up in there! I'm freezing! Give me back my clothes! I wanna die! If you don't shut up, we'll accommodate you. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! We'll come in there and use you like a baseball bat to bat in the walls if you don't shut up. Go turn on the air conditioning into the coldest setting. That'll slow him down. The man in our story was no stranger to imprisonment. He had been in jail many times, but he was unaware of the powerful forces that put him there. In this first of a two-part story, we'll hear how Odell Summer reached that point before he was unshackled. When I was little, my mother repeatedly left my father for other men. Dad lashed out at me, hitting and kicking, said it was my fault crawl into my closet and cry until my head hurt, wondering why nobody loved me. Until Mama came back, Dad would leave me and my sister with relatives, and that's when I found some relief from the pain. Look at that smile on Odell's face. Looks like he's asleep sitting up. And now we know how to calm him down and keep him still. <laughs> hey, come here, Odell. Come here and have another hit on this joint. Mom would come home and we'd be together again as a family. Until the next time. I'd go to school and fight with other kids to release the pent-up frustrations within me. One teacher, frustrated at my rebellion, squeezed my neck so hard I flung my desk at her. They kicked me out of public school and put me, at age eight, in one for the physically and mentally handicapped. I lived with an uncle and got high every morning before school. When I was 13, my parents divorced. <sighs> Reckon this might be your last day at school, huh? Yeah. You're gonna like the woman your dad married. Yeah? Yeah, she's easy going. I'm gonna like being at regular school, not the one I've been going to. Well, you had enough, Odell? Yeah, I'm really high. <laughs> <laughs> you better get cracking before you miss the school bus. My parents never taught me anything about God, but a man my dad had grown up with became a preacher. I started going to hear him preach. He made me feel as if I could accomplish something in life. And one day I went down the aisle and made the profession of faith he talked about, but I still got high every chance I could. An older cousin took me camping and I introduced him to pot while he taught me to drink. <coughs> you want another beer? Not yet. 
How about you? Want another joint? No, I'm cruising, Odell. Well, why can't the rest of life be like this? I thought you liked that school. Well, it's better than the one I used to go to, but still don't fit in. Except with the potheads. Where'd you get this stuff? A uh, neighbor across the street from Dad. Is it expensive? Yeah, but I work and earn my own money so I can buy it. You guys still going to church? I'm not so sure God is real anymore. I thought you were gung-ho about religion. Not anymore. If God was as real as they say, he'd make my life better. We drank and got high every night, and I soon was sent to another behavioral school. Then I met Loretta, my stepmother's cousin, and we partied constantly with her and her friends. The parties moved from liquor and marijuana to Valium and cocaine. After I fell asleep in school and failed a drug test while on probation, the court sent me to a locked-on rehab far away. Mom came to visit. Odell! Mom, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see you, to find out what's going on. You drove 300 miles? You always swore you'd never get on the interstate. Well, I did. Somebody's got to do something about you. There's nothing wrong with me. They told me you're doing drugs. That's why you're here. You never cared about what happened to me. Why start now? Oh, I cared enough to come all the way here. You quit hanging around with those no-good friends and make something of yourself, Odell. It's my life. I knew when you started smoking cigarettes, you were in trouble. If you don't straighten up, you'll end up with needle tracks on your arms. Even though I cared about what she thought of me, every other weekend my dad came and took me home. Where I partied with one girl after another. But at the group home, I worked hard and made straight A's. After 10 months, they let me go home to my mother and sister. By then it was summer, so I got a job, a driver's license, and a car. Life was good, but temptation swirled around me. I hung out with my cousin again. How come you quit your job at the burger joint? I got a better one at the furniture factory. Yeah? Cool. You bet. And this job counts as one of my classes at school. Better yet, life is looking up for a change. <laughs> as long as you can get high. Some guy at work sells crystal meth. You ever tried it? Nah. I heard about it, though. Yeah. It's a far cry from pot or even cocaine. Crystal meth absorbed me. When it was gone, I couldn't think of anything else. I searched my room over and over, thinking I might have dropped some. I scoured the sidewalk, thinking someone may have tossed a bag in a police chase. School interfered with making money, so I dropped out after the 11th grade. I was almost 18. But the job was tied to my class, so the boss fired me. You're on drugs again, aren't you? Let me alone, Ma. Oh, I want the truth, Odell. I heard you were using hard drugs. So what? Don't you know how bad they are? You'll end up in the gutter or in prison. I thought you learned at that rehab place. Mom, I said let me alone. You could lose your mind, Odell. This is serious. You could die. I don't want to talk about it. Well, you're gonna talk about it. You gotta lick this, son. Other people have, and you can too. I'm getting out of here. I couldn't resist the clutches of the drugs and the demons that held me. I moved back in with Dad and from his house to a friend's. Then from one friend to another or to jail for underage drinking. The court took my license for drunken driving, but I stayed behind the wheel. I got longer and longer sentences, but I didn't care. My life was so meaningless. At 19, I attempted suicide, so the doctor gave me antidepressants. I got drunk, swallowed them all, and woke up in the hospital. This isn't the first time you tried to end your life. I can tell by the scars on your wrists. Why didn't you let me die? You won't always feel that way. Take off these straps. I want to get out of here. We can't do that. You've been pretty violent. <clears throat> let me go. Right, we're going to transfer you to a place where you'll get some help. They sent me to a mental hospital, and after three or four days, a doctor there released me. Said there was nothing wrong with me. In truth, there was nothing right with me. I read the New Testament, but 
after a while got bored and quit. Once again, I had no place to live until Mom agreed to rent us a rundown apartment built in a barn in a rundown trailer park. And there was Loretta again. Hey there, Odell. You live here, Loretta? Sure do. Me and my kids are crashing with a friend. You have kids? That little girl. And a baby boy inside. They get on my friend's nerves, so I like to get a place of my own as soon as I can. What about you? I'm living here with my mother. Your mother? <laughs> yeah. Why don't we get a place together? It sounds like a lot more fun. Sure does. Mom puts a crimp in my party life. I can fix that, Odell. My mother warned me not to get involved with her, but I rented a place with Loretta and her kids. I fell in love with her the first week we were together. For once in my life, I could dream and plan for the future. Thought of us as a family, but Loretta didn't share my feelings. While I worked 60 to 80 hours a week, she left the kids with others so she could party. I hid behind denial until reality closed in. Where have you been, Loretta? It's midnight. Out with friends. I got the whole day off to spend with you, and you vanished. I told you I was going out. You think I'm stupid, don't you? Supporting you and your kids while you chase every pair of pants in town. That's a lie. You're not playing me for a fool again. You're out of here, girl. What are you doing with my stuff? Throwing it out, along with you. Don't you ever come back here. We're through. Like a wounded animal full of rage and pain, I wanted to lash out. Two weeks later, when a man tried to steal my car, I beat him savagely and took perverted pleasure in every punch. The police arrested me for aggravated assault, which carried a three to six year sentence. But I didn't even go to court when my case came up. Recklessly, I stayed high, wrote bad checks, and even bought a gun. Folks, we'll get back to Odell's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. Dot org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Odell's story. One day, the police pulled me over. And while they were checking my ID, I jumped from the car and ran. They chased me down and took me to jail where I tried to hang myself. When that failed, I raged and screamed until they turned the air conditioning so cold, I curled up in a ball to keep warm. Day after day passed. Sunday came and I saw preachers pass my cell. God, if you're real, have one of those preachers stop and talk to me. When none of them stopped, despair overwhelmed me. Then a man paused and stuck his head in at the barred window. Hey, young fella. Do you know Jesus? You want somebody to talk to you about him? I went up front at church when I was 13. <laughs> Going forward during an invitation can't save you, you know. But it don't matter what you've done. Jesus died on the cross for sinners just like you. You can't ever do anything so bad that he can't forgive it. Oh, Lord, make your word clear to this young man. Save him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Help him know that even the worst sin can be forgiven because of your death on the cross for him. Thank you. I'll be back next week. I'm Brother Bobby. 
His words gave me a glimmer of hope. I asked an inmate in the adjoining cell if he had any books, and he pushed a New Testament through a hole in the wall between our cells. Reading the book of Revelation, I trembled with fear because I knew for sure that God was real. I got on my knees and asked him to forgive my sins. I promised him I'd give up sin forever if he met my needs. Bobby kept his word and came back the next Sunday. Well, you look a whole lot better than you did last week. The guards finally let me out of solitary confinement. I've been praying for you. I've been reading Revelation, Bobby. Well, that's good. God promises to bless whoever reads, hears, and keeps the sayings of the prophecy of that book. Who can understand them? We have to be born again to really understand the Bible, Odell. I made a profession of faith when I was 13. Then ask God to help you live up to your words. Start living like you believe what Jesus did for you on the cross. What did he do for me? He broke the power of sin and death. He came to destroy the works of the devil. If you got the Spirit of God in you, he will show up in your life. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I can't seem to do that, Bobby. Well, here's a verse that helps me. It's from Galatians. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He died for me? Yeah, you, me, everybody. Since God sent his only son to die for you when you were a dirty, rotten sinner, think what he'd do for you once you become his child. Here, read this. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Huh. I sure wanted God to give me all things. Most of all, a family to love. So I spend most of my time praying and reading the Gospels. And I understood some of what I read. After three months, I went before the judge. I faced a heap of charges. But God had mercy. How's it feel to be a free man, Odell? I still can't believe he put me on probation. I told the judge I met the Lord while I was in jail. Well, meeting the Lord is not enough, Odell. You have to get to know it. By reading his word and going to church, I know. You told me, Bobby. I'll pick you up at 9 on Sunday morning. And you tell everyone you meet about Jesus. I went to church with Bobby and told everyone about the Lord who had done so much for me. Then, things soured. I was living with my uncle who began charging me too much rent. My only friend was Bobby and he lived 50 miles away and had his own problems. Then came a new one for me. Hello? Hello, Odell. It's me. Loretta! Have I got news for you. I gave my life to Jesus when I was in jail, and I'm a different man. You are? <laughs> I sure am. Do you know that Jesus died for our sins? Not really. Oh, it's true. I reckon people call me a sinner, Odell. We all are. But God sent Jesus to pay the penalty for our sins. Once you get to know him, Loretta, Jesus will change your life. I sure need something, honey. I'm living with the man who runs around on me. Can I come over and talk to you? I should have never let you go, Odell. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. You just haven't met Jesus yet. He's the best thing that ever happened to you. How come that's all you talk about? Because the Lord kept me out of prison. He gave me a reason to live. Once I gave you a reason to live. Loretta, I read the Bible and I go to church now. And I know that you can't put your trust in people. <laughs> you don't trust me? Not really. You need Jesus. Until then, you're lost. Do you think you're better than me? No, I'm just different now. Well, I'll go to church with you, Odell. I can learn about God, too. Oh, God, save her. Save Loretta so we can be a family. I want a son so bad, Lord. A son that I can raise right and show my dad how a son should be raised. A few times she went to church with me. Then I didn't see her for two weeks. 
and I blamed God. Finally, she called to say she'd lost her children because she was using crack cocaine again. I can't believe it, Lord. You have been holding up my end of the deal, trying not to sin, and you haven't given me what I want. All I asked was for her to get saved so we could have a family. You've just been waiting for me to fail, haven't you? Oh, why do I even try? Double-mindedness won out. In one 24-hour period, I slid right back into my old lifestyle. Whenever Bobby came to the door, I pretended I wasn't there. One day, I finally came out. Where you been, Odell? Uh, busy? Too busy for God? Look, Bobby, I know God is real, but this Christian life isn't isn't working out for me. Oh, you haven't given it a chance. I tried. It's just not for me. God loves you, Odell. If he really loved me, he'd give me a family like I asked him to. God don't have to do anything to prove his love. He did that on the cross. But why didn't he answer my prayers? Oh, how do you know what's good for you? What if Jesus had asked not to go to the cross, huh? We'd be lost in sin looking at hell. Yeah, I guess. Jesus asked God to take the cup from him. But in the end, he said, thy will be done. I know. Odell, you keep reading the Bible. Come back to church, okay? Sure, Bobby, I will. I agreed just to get rid of him. But I went back to my old ways. Then Loretta returned and wanted us to live together. I decided to get revenge by moving in and then dumping her. But the longer we stayed together, the more attached I became. She started going to bars until midnight, and when I yelled at her, she cried and promised not to do it again. But she did. Finally, I left and bumped around from job to job, woman to woman. Two meaningless years passed. I was 23 when she wrangled her way back into my life. It's a good thing I wasn't hurt bad when that car rolled over. You were pretty bruised up. That's why I've stayed with you till you got better. Well, now I'm pregnant, so you have to stay. You sure? It's not my first baby, Odell. How do I know it's mine? It's yours. And don't start giving me a hard time. I hate being pregnant. Once more, the double-mindedness took over. I'd been praying for a son, but faced with reality, I backed away from her. Eventually, she moved in with her grandmother. I partied hard, even using ecstasy. Kicked out of my rundown trailer and with nowhere to go, I turned to my mother, whom I hadn't seen for months. She looked terrible. Her weight, no more than 60 or 70 pounds, and her mind was faltering. Life is too hard, Odell. Too hard. I'm, I'm plumb wore out. What's wrong, Mama? Oh, doctor says I have some kind of disease. It's making my brain degenerate. <laughs> I wonder how he can tell. I've always been out of my mind. I'm sorry, Mom. Oh, it's not your fault. Reckon there's no place in the world for the likes of me. No place at all. Nobody cares if I live or die anyway. I do, Mama. I care. You have your own problems, son. You sure can't take on mine. It's too much. Too much even for me. Can't they do something? Oh, the doctor won't tell me the truth about it. And I can't face any more problems. I'm tired of it all. Sick and tired of it all. I'm fixing to kill myself, Odell. Mama, don't say that. Don't kill yourself. She seemed to be completely out of her mind. But then I was too from using ecstasy. A week later, I learned that she wrecked her car and was killed almost instantly. I knew she'd fulfilled her words. She was only 42 years old. Somehow, I got through the days before her funeral. I'm really sorry about your mother, Odell. Uh, she had her problems, but she loved me. When I was growing up, she tried to help me change before it was too late. She had a hard life. She told me last week she was going to end it all. And she did. Why? 
She had some kind of brain disease she couldn't face. Where are you living now? Nowhere. But a family member offered to let me and Loretta stay with her and her boyfriend. You and Loretta back together again? <laughs> yeah. She's expecting my baby. I hope it's a boy. I've wanted a son for a long time. Somehow, I knew the baby Loretta carried was mine. But that didn't keep me from veering off track. Nothing helped me back after my mother died. My emotional state was totally out of control. Loretta and I moved into my cousin and her boyfriend who sold cocaine. I not only used the drug, but sold it too, gaining money and power. I packed a gun as I cast aside any thoughts about God and moved completely into the dark side. Next time, we'll hear the conclusion of Odell's testimony. Until then, listening friend, we hope you've had a glimpse of God's great love for you. Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Nowhere else can you find such love. Trust Him with your soul, won't you? If you need help in making this crucial decision for Christ, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This specific plaque has dark brown bark and a golden center. The scripture is written in light green color that makes it pop. If you'd like to take a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. Folks, unfortunately, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, phone number, and email. The winner of the sweepstake for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced March 20th, but the deadline for entry is March 4th. We look forward to hearing from you, and next time... Oh, God, all I ever wanted was a happy home to raise my son in a normal life the way everyone else does. If you don't know how to talk to God, don't miss the conclusion of Odell Summers' testimony. I can't do it myself. I've got to have your help. His ongoing conversation with God led him to freedom, even while he was behind bars. I've gone back and forth, never really trusting you. I tried to make deals with you so I could have my sin. You're saying my problem isn't just my sin, it's my heart. I'm sinful in the very core of my being. Oh, Lord, I repent for all my sins. 
Give me a new heart and a passion to please you. Put your Holy Spirit in me and give me a new life. Invite your friends to hear the conclusion of his testimony. We'll hear how Odell's summer was unshackled. Heard in the true story of Odell's summer part one were Steve Bayorgian, Allison Voller, Amanda Markeski, Gary Brachetto, Mark Forrest, and Demetrius Troy. Original music, Don Bador. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Sound assistant, Holly Krajewski. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Kenitha Gabler. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.